Good morning, church family. Pastor Brett here, and to visitors, welcome to our devotional channel here at Rockhampton Baptist. I sometimes meet Christians that are a little bit confused about how faith is supposed to work out in real life. Namely, the balance between how much decision do I make versus how much do I let God guide me in that. Now, it's true the Bible does call us to live a life of faith. Jesus himself said that we shouldn't worry about the same things that the world worries about, that we should trust God. And on a number of occasions in the Bible, we actually see warning messages to people from God who have trusted in human wisdom instead of putting their trust in God. So it begs this question, how does faith actually work out in our everyday actions? What am I supposed to do? And what am I supposed to let God do? Now, instinctively, we do make this separation. For example, if I fail to make my bed in the morning in the belief that God will make it for me, I'm likely to incur the wrath of my mother. So instinctively, we have this scale in our mind. So I will fill my car with petrol because it's the sensible thing to do. I will study hard so that I'm in a better place to remember things when the exam comes. And I'll make, take my medicine so that my medical condition remains stable. But I still meet people that get a little bit confused about where these balances meet in the middle. What does the concept of faith actually mean? What is God's responsibility and what is mine? I want to share with you one of the stories of King Hezekiah that is a really good example of how this balance works out in real life. It comes from 2 Chronicles, chapter 32, verse 1 to 8. By way of background, the Bible had just finished mentioning that Hezekiah was a godly man and who had made very good decisions. So we'll start reading verse 1 of chapter 32. After Hezekiah had faithfully carried out this work, King Sennacherib of Assyria invaded Judah. He laid siege to the fortified towns, giving orders for his army to break through their walls. When Hezekiah realized that Sennacherib also intended to attack Jerusalem, he consulted with his officials and military advisors, and they decided to stop the flow of the springs outside the city. They organized a huge work crew to stop the flow of the springs, cutting off the brook that ran through the fields. For they said, why should the kings of Assyria come here and find plenty of water? Then King Hezekiah worked hard at repairing all the broken sections of the wall, erecting towers and constructing a wall outside the first. He also reinforced the supporting terraces in the city of David and manufactured a large number of weapons and shields. He appointed military officers over the people and assembled them before him in the square at the city gate. Then King Hezekiah encouraged them by saying, Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria or his mighty army, for there is a power far greater on our side. He may have a great army, but they are merely men. We have the Lord our God to help us and fight our battles for us. Hezekiah's words greatly encouraged the people. So Hezekiah was faced with a, a situation and he made a number of good strategic decisions. Firstly, he stopped the flow of the water of the springs. So the city had water, but the surrounding fields wouldn't, depriving any sieging army from gaining access to fresh water. He strengthened the walls and he restructured his army, made some administrative decisions. And what we learn here is that Hezekiah acted diligently as he prepared as best he could. Hezekiah used human resources. He used advisors, he used experts, he used people with skills, and he made strategic decisions. 
His trust in God did not exempt him from acting wisely. And God was with him. Hezekiah, you see, understood his calling as a king was to make good decisions. But he also knew that God was his true hope. He struck a right balance here between faith and action. And the right balance is to trust that God will be with you and guide you as you make your decisions and go about your actions. If your heart is genuine and you have a will to serve God, He will guide you in your decision making. You see, doing nothing at all is not the same as having faith. Having faith is no excuse for foolish choices. That's why we do stop at red lights. We turn up for work on time. We put money into superannuation. We discipline our children. We look after our health. We make good decisions. Not because we trust man rather than God, but because this is what God wants us to do as we live in the world. True maturity means that we learn how trust and faith translates into action. Let's pray. Lord, you've promised always to be with us, guiding us in every step of the way, closing doors and opening others. And for the heart that truly is for you, for those who are truly righteous, you guide their steps. You inspire their actions. You give wisdom to their choices. I pray that that is true in our life, that we would trust you through the way we make decisions. I pray that we would help to know what this balance is in all of life's situations. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep walking with God. Keep talking with him. Uh, read the Bible and listen to what he's got to say. And when he does speak to you, trust and obey. Keep looking for opportunities to bless others. And we'll see you soon.